Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Power Core Productions and Podcastings. In today's video, we are going to be continuing Naruto Polaris, What If Hanabi Hyuga Was Born First, Part 5. As always, if you are new to the channel or if you enjoy regularly what we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and podcasting stats to come out now and in the future. Where we last left off with our series, Naruto and Sasuke both competed in the wild card round of the Chunin exam finals. Sasuke getting a rather hard fought win over Dosu and Naruto getting an impressive victory over Tamari to advance to the first round of the finals. Our first match sees Neji Hyuga versus Sasuke Uchiha. Followed by that, we have Hanabi Hyuga versus Sakura Haruno. Then Naruto Uzumaki versus Shikamaru Nara. And finally, Rock Lee versus Gara of the Sand. With the final eight now moving on, we get a chance to see who will advance in the tuning exams. For all this and more, stay tuned as we now continue Naruto Polaris What If Hanabi Hyuga Was Born First Part 5. As always, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. As Ginma lowered his arm, the first match of the first round would begin. Sasuke Uchiha versus Neji Hyuga. Sasuke had some time to recover from his fight versus Dosu. Even so, his hearing in his left ear was spotty at best. But still, for the most part, he wasn't as disoriented as before. Sasuke wasted no time as he activated his Sharingan. One crucial benefit that Sasuke had in his favor was that he was on a team with Hanabi Hyuga. Unlike many others, Sasuke had been sparring with a member of the Hyuga clan ever since his days in the academy. And not just anyone, a member from the main branch who was a prodigy in her own right. Because of this, Sasuke had as much experience fighting against the Byakugan as anyone could have. Something that Neji was keenly aware of, and it started in the beginning of the fight. Sasuke attempted to launch a flurry of kunai towards Neji. Of course, to no one's surprise, Neji was able to evade and deflect them all with ease. But that wasn't really the point. The point was for Sasuke to see how quick Neji was, just as he expected. From what he had learned from Hanabi, Neji, even while being from the side branch of the Hyuga clan, was still just as capable as she was, as seen in his skill. Sasuke would then enter into a flurry of combat with him. Now, this version of Sasuke wouldn't be as fast as you would think. As you see, Rock Lee had not unveiled the full might of his speed. At best, Sasuke's natural speed was about the same as Rock Lee with his weights on. Not something to sneeze at, but at the same time, this was a speed that Neji could handle. So Sasuke didn't have the edge when it came to all-out speed. But what he did have an advantage in was countering the gentle fist, or at least developing what Sasuke called the anti-fist. It was a form of taijutsu that Sasuke made, specifically the fight against the user of the Byakugan. Now, this anti-fist, as Sasuke called it, was more or less a form of taijutsu where he was able to block and counter the strikes of the gentle fist. At the very least, if someone were to attempt to use the 64 palms, he might be able to deflect a few of them, although he was going to get hit regardless, that was something that he knew. But still, this was a better outcome than anyone might expect. 
The crowd watching on as the Uchiha and the Hyuga fought in the center of the arena before eventually backing away from one another after their first exchange. Neji smirked, all while being a little bit agitated. So, it seems being on the same team with my cousin has fared you well, Uchiha. Really? Now I take that as a compliment, Hyuga. But still, I will show you the difference in our power. In the end, you fight against an inferior Hyuga, while I am the superior. <laughs> you think that, but I've just engaged in combat with you, and I've fought in Hanabi practically since my beginning in the academy. And if I had to take a guess between the two of you, I think she's definitely got you beat. Sasuke could see a vein bulging in Neji's forehead. It was definitely getting under his skin to be compared to her, and Sasuke wanted to take it to his advantage. What's the matter? Afraid that you can't live up to the status of the main branch? Although, what do I expect from someone that comes from the side branch? You're trying to rattle me up, Sasuke. But that won't work. Because you're not the only one who knows how to use triggers. After all, I think we could safely say that when it comes to the Uchiha, when it comes to you, there's someone who's definitely the superior. Sasuke hearing this would tense up. Of course, it didn't take a genius to know what he was referring to. I'd be careful what you say next, Neji. What you say might just come back to haunt you. And I could say the same to you. You try to play on the burrado of being an Uchiha, of believing that your clan's techniques will be enough to save you. And you're not the same as me? Not at all. You see, I recognize the faults of my clan. Unlike you, I can see that truth. However, you being blinded by that fact will be your downfall. Come at me if you dare, but I will show you the difference between us. Sasuke took a deep breath, his two Tomo Sharingan blazing towards Neji as he went charging at his top speed. Sure enough, Neji was able to dodge and counter as the two began another flurry of offense. Of course, under normal circumstances, one would not engage the Hyuga in such a way, but Sasuke was no ordinary individual. If there was anyone capable of fighting a prodigy Hyuga, it would be Sasuke Uchiha. Hiyashi and Hinata watching from the stands. It wasn't lost on Hiyashi at all, just the gifts that his nephew had. After all, he was his brother's son. But still though, despite Sasuke's best efforts, Neji still held the advantage. Sasuke would try to go in for a strike from behind. However, Neji at the last moment would counter, spinning around and delivering four strikes to Sasuke, sending him back before jumping to deliver an axe kick. Sasuke moving out of the way at the last moment, regrouping himself as Neji stood poised and ready. Sasuke would breathe heavily for a moment. He had taken a few more strikes than he would have wanted to. He started running through his mind thinking of what kind of jutsu that he could use to his advantage. Deciding to go for it, Sasuke weaved the hand signs together properly as he yelled out, Fire style, fire dragon jutsu. Instantly, an inferno dragon would come roaring out from Sasuke towards Neji. However, Neji simply smirked as 
an orb began to spin around him as Neji performed the rotation. Of course, Hanabi wasn't surprised by this, although Hiyashi, that was a different story. The fact that Neji had learned the rotation and that he could use it so effectively, well, that was truly remarkable. As the rotation dissipated, and it managed to scave off the fire dragon. In the midst of the flame and smoke, Sasuke would go charging through. However, Neji would deliver a few choice strikes, seemingly taking him out. However, the Sasuke he had struck would smirk as he instantly burst in the flame, Neji shielding his eyes as it was a fire clone. It was then that from out of nowhere, there would be a crackle of lightning. Blitzing towards Neji at high speeds, Sasuke had managed to use the lightning style lightning hound jutsu. A trail of lightning leaving from Sasuke's hands as a lightning hound went bellowing towards him. It had managed to strike Neji in time before he could counter shocking him and sending him back to the other side of the arena wall. As the two of them rose to their feet, Sasuke knew that he had hit his mark. Neji could still feel the stings of the lightning attack. Even still, he wasn't completely shooken. It wasn't enough to do too much damage, but still, he couldn't be so careless. Soon enough, Sasuke and Neji would stand for the next volley of attack. But before Sasuke could plan his next move, Neji had already managed to blitz him. Now being irritated, he was ready to show the difference between the two. As Neji unleashed the eight trigrams, 64 palms, Sasuke tried his best to counter against the palm strikes. But still, from the damage he had incurred already, there were only but so many he could block. Out of the 64 strikes, Neji landed 50 of them. Sasuke was left on one knee, but the fact that he had still managed to block 14 strikes, that was remarkable. As Sasuke looked up to Neji, Neji looking down at him. This is the difference between you and I, Uchiha. It is only fate that you would lose to me here. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't describe to your petty idea of fate. Is that so? Anyway, it does not matter what you think of me. For the outcome was already written long ago. You would fall at my hands. Uh-huh. And what? Is it fate that you're just going to win here today? Precisely. As he eyed up in the stands towards Hiyashi, and then towards Hanabi. So you got family problems. Who cares? Like I would expect you to understand. Neji would remove his headband, showing Sasuke the cursed seal on him. A curse mark? Is it like mine? This is a seal of those who are trapped, of those who can never be free. This mark is something I live with every day. It's my burden to bear. In the end, destiny is something that cannot be fought. Not by any of us, especially by you. You think that it is your destiny to avenge your clan. But for me, I do not see it that way. And just what would you know about it? I know enough. I know enough to know that maybe ever since that day, you have trained in and out. You've trained yourself until you can't stand, until you're exhausted beyond compare. You throw yourself into your training day in and day out. You thought 
that if you could win these exams, then it would prove your strength. It would prove your capabilities. But the simple fact of the matter is that it won't. It doesn't matter how hard you try. In the end, we are all destined to face our futures. And if this is the power that you can give me now, then you will never accomplish your ambition. Sasuke scoffed at this as he kicked away at Neji once again, trying his best to stand onto his feet. He looked at him menacingly. Yeah? And just what gives you the right to decide my fate? My destiny. I know what I want. And I know what I am going to achieve. My dream is something that I will make a reality of. If you want to be bound by fate and by your own dogma, then be my guest. But don't ever lump me in with you. I will show you the difference between the Uchiha and the Hyuga. Because as an Uchiha, our fate is not written beforehand. Our fate is what we make it ourselves. And I am the embodiment of that fate. My dream is what will be made into reality because I will will it to be so. Sasuke charged lightning chakra into his hand as he flipped back over to the wall. If you have something that can tank this attack, then I suggest you use it. Everyone watched as the crackling of chakra appeared in Sasuke's hand as there began to be the sound of chirping. A lightning style attack. I see. Neji raised his chakra as high as he could. This would be their final clash. A clash between the Hyuga and the Uchiha. He's going to use that jutsu, Kakashi would say. Kakashi, Guy would chime in. Do you really think that that jutsu is the best use in a time like this? Well, from what I was able to learn from Sasuke, he's not as bad as one might think. He can perform it up to three times a day. Three times? At such a young age? He's a lot stronger than many give him credit. But even still, he's banking a lot on this first shot. He's gonna have to make it count. The ultimate piercing attack against the ultimate defense. To see which one will prevail. Sasuke burst out in speed. Being increased and amplified by his ninjutsu. As he used the Chidori. 1000 birds. As Neji began using rotation. Sasuke went charging straight towards the rotating dome. His fist kept close to his side as the Chidori went charging at blazing speed until eventually the Chidori would collide with the rotation. The two jutsus clashing as crackles of lightning and wind would swirl all through the arena. The force of the attack bellowing, the sound of birds echoing throughout the stadium, and the sound of a typhoon following them. The two attacks were colliding. The unstoppable force versus the immovable object. One way or another, this fight would end on these two attacks. A collision between two of the best. Between two of Konoha's young elites. Neji gave everything he had into the rotation while Sasuke's Chidori continued to pierce through, but the dome held firm. Neji looking at him as he strained to hold the attack forward. 
You won't get through, Sasuke. I won't allow it. I will grind you into the dirt. And it will end here. Sasuke looked back towards Neji. He could feel the power of the Chidori slipping. He knew he needed a burst. He needed something that could give him the edge. Anything. In that brief moment, the cursed seal on his neck would start to spread just a little bit from under his chin to his shoulder and to down the side of his body. He could feel the power amping him and pushing him forward as he fed on his desire to win no matter what. The Chidori slowly piercing through the rotation, causing it to lose its speed before finally the Chidori would break through in its disperse. Sasuke not looking to go for a lethal strike would use the Chidori and strike the chest of Neji Hyuga, shocking him all over his body before finally a strong burst would blow the two of them back. Sasuke's left arm, it would be a bit burned with a few traces of lightning running through it as he lied on the ground. But as for Neji, he had been pushed back against the wall as he slowly fell out of it. Sasuke in the meanwhile would get back to his feet. Neji tried to stand, but he felt as though he couldn't. The power of the Chidori was sending shivers all throughout his body. He could feel his nerves had been pulled out of whack, but even still he forced himself to stand. Sasuke now feeling as though he might only have one good arm left, he held his hand up as Neji looked at him menacingly. The two standing across from one another, they knew that it was coming to an end. The both of them would charge at one another. Sharingan and Byakugan. Neji had enough for 32 strikes and he delivered them. Sasuke with his one right arm would counter each of the strikes. Out of the 32 that had been thrown, only 20 landed. Sasuke had blocked the other 12. Neji though would deliver the final strike to Sasuke, striking him directly in his other shoulder, his right shoulder. Sasuke felt as though both of his arms might have gone limp and Neji believed that he had won. As Sasuke dropped to one knee on the ground. Neji however raised his fist to strike Sasuke out for good. But at the last second, with enough perception, Sasuke would jump and do a reverse bicycle kick, sending Neji high into the air. As Sasuke continued, he would strike him into the air over and over again before pushing himself back to the ground. Sasuke weaved the hand signs. It caused pain for him to hold both of his arms up into the air, but he fought through it as he created three fire clones. Once the three fire clones had been made, three of them would use their jutsu in unison. Fire style, tri dragon jutsu, threefold flame. The three clones would each create a fire dragon until all three of the fire dragons would emerge, colliding into one and striking Neji while he was in the air. Neji tried to use a form of the rotation even while floating. He managed to scave off the worst of the flame but he was still hit pretty badly. Propelling himself higher, he would look up to see that Sasuke was above him. As Sasuke delivered a series of strikes that Neji couldn't counter. As he used the lion's barrage and slammed Neji to the ground. Neji would cough up blood as he now landed with a thud straight to the arena floor. 
Sasuke, getting to his feet slowly, would rise as Genma made his way to check the damage of the final assault. The fire clones disappearing and Sasuke standing as best he could. Genma would declare Sasuke the winner, the crowd cheering in approval from the match that they had seen. Even Naruto and Hanabi, they too were pleased at the outcome of the fight, to see just how well Sasuke had performed. And as for Neji, he was carted off to the nursery as he had suffered defeat. The next match would see Hanabi Hyuga versus Sakura Haruno. Now, under normal circumstances, you might think this is an easy win for Hanabi, but I can assure you, this would be anything but. As Gemma would start the match, we would see a form of history between both Sakura and Hanabi. From back in their days in the academy, this version of Sakura Haruno is a lot different from the one that you might be familiar with. Don't get me wrong, this version of Sakura was every bit as annoying as she was in the original. Only, now, it didn't really bother Naruto or Sasuke as much. Preferably Naruto because he had gotten over Sakura pretty quickly. He did have a crush on her, but he was friends with Hanabi and Sasuke. And all three of them could agree that Sakura was plenty of annoying. But Sakura's beef with Hanabi came from a much different reason. For all the things that Sakura was, the one thing that she took seriously was her ninja training, but she did it for a rather vain reason. You see, Sakura never liked the idea of Sasuke spending so much time with Hanabi, even though the two of them didn't even have that kind of relationship. They were good friends, they enjoyed training together, and they enjoyed testing themselves. But there was no romance between the two. But Sakura, she didn't see it that way. In fact, she grew much disdain towards Hanabi every time they met. But what truly pissed off Sakura was that no matter what she did, she could never catch up to Hanabi. She had ended up coming in second place for a Konoichi of the Year to her. In the end, if Hanabi didn't have that Byakugan, Sakura knows that she would have won. So, from the time that they had graduated till now, Sakura's training with Team Koronai. Koronai was able to see that Sakura had a unique gift for Genjutsu. But not just that, Sakura had a revolutionary mind. Putting her smarts together with someone versed in Genjutsu arts, Sakura had been working on a lot of different jutsus, but specifically, she was working on jutsus that could work against the Byakugan. It was what she was training for, and this was the matchup she wanted. As the battle began, Hanabi would take her position in the center of the arena. Sakura, much to everyone's surprise and chagrin, would go charging at her immediately only for her to get blown back to the wall over and over. Hanabi had managed to slam her against the wall about eight different times, spread out evenly all throughout the arena. However, unknown to Hanabi, Sakura had planned for this. She actually wanted to. It was part of the reason why she had beefed up her endurance training, because she knew she was going to have to take a lot of hits in order to pull off this technique. As she staggered and made her way back towards Hanabi once again, Hanabi shook her head, telling Sakura that it would be best if she just gave up now, because she thought Sakura was going to give her a fight, but if this was the best that she could do, then she considered this an embarrassment. However, Sakura would smile as she held her hands together, in a particular pattern that you might be familiar with. She would thank Hanabi for helping her with her technique, and that now it would be her downfall. Sakura would yell, 
Ninja Art, 8 Trigram Seal Barrier Jutsu, Dark Domain. This jutsu takes inspiration from the domain expansion from Jujutsu Kaisen. You see, the 8 times that Sakura got slammed against the wall, every time she did, she discreetly placed a seal. The 8 seals were all spread out evenly, and the moment she activated the jutsu, the 8 seals would cause a dark cloud to form all over the arena itself. The people in the crowd would be able to see one another, but they wouldn't be able to see inside of the dark clouds that showed over the arena itself. Even Genma had to move out of the way to avoid being caught in the cloud, and he couldn't see what was happening either. Until the Jutsu was dissipated, they'd have no way of knowing what was happening on the inside. You could say that in the Naruto world, this is a form of domain expansion created by Sakura, a revolutionary technique for those versed in Genjutsu. The properties are very similar to that of a domain expansion in Jujutsu Kaisen. By creating this particular domed area of dark cloud, where no one can see inside and out, Sakura essentially creates a domain where her Genjutsu is able to hit 100% of the time. Also, the only way to destroy the domain is to destroy the seals that are spread all around cr that create the barrier in the first place. Even when Hanabi tries to use the dispelment, it doesn't allow the Genjutsu to be dispelled because the barrier acts as a cancellation it cancels out specifically the dispel technique. So the moment that Hanabi tries to dispel the Genjutsu, the barrier basically counters her attempts to counter the Genjutsu. A counter to the counter. As such, even with Hanabi's Byakugan, seeing through the Genjutsu would be next to impossible. Hanabi found herself in complete darkness. From everywhere around her, to even below her. She would try to run, but no matter how far she got, she thought she was still standing in place. Until out of nowhere, the scenery would change to that of fire. Fire all around her. Hanabi felt herself being overwhelmed by the flame. She could feel the air suffocating her greatly. She felt as though she were starting to become overcooked. She could feel her throat beginning to dry. She knew this had to be a genjutsu, this couldn't be real. Until the flames started to singe at her clothing. It felt all too real. She would attempt to use the dispel technique, but it wasn't working for some reason. Throughout the flames, Sakura would appear in multiple areas. All of them throwing kunai towards Hanabi. Hanabi would use the rotation to block them all away, and she thought that she had seemingly stopped them all, only to feel two of them stabbing her in the back of her leg. Hanabi screamed out in pain, but there was no way. She knows she stopped the attack. How could she have been hit? She looked over to see where it occurred, and then another flurry of shurikens came. However, now Hanabi felt as though she couldn't use the rotation, and she found herself being stabbed in the arm and in the shoulder, as Sakura would appear in and out of her vision, striking her over and over again repeatedly. Hanabi tried to go in for a counter, but the Sakura disappeared, only for another one to come in for a strike. You're in my domain, Hyuga. This is my world. And in my world, I am the powerful one, and you are the weakling. Hanami found herself seeing multiple visions of horror and pain. Sakura was using the hell viewing technique, putting Hanabi through much abstract horror. All the same, Hanabi couldn't tell what was real or what was fake, until finally, 
Hanabi would see the inner Sakura. A dark aberration of Sakura herself with writing on her forehead, looming over her. As the dark Sakura raised her fist, she would strike down at Hanabi over and over again until Hanabi felt herself being smashed into the dirt and being pounded into the ground. Hanabi, it all felt real. It all felt like it were truly hitting her. As the inner Sakura had finished her beating, now the regular Sakura would stand over her, grabbing her by her hair and lifting her up. How does it feel? Your precious Byakugan can't save you. And now, I am the victor. Yield to me now and admit defeat. However, Hanabi would push her back. She could feel the pain all over her body. But even still, she knew that she had to do something. If she were really caught in a barrier, then the only choice she had was to destroy it. She would have to use her rotation to its most powerful degree. But even still, she wondered if she had enough strength left. For all she knew, all this pain could be fake or it could all be real. And if it was, then she wasn't in any position to do anything. However, Hanabi would fight past it. As she closed her eyes, she remained focused on what she needed to have done. Instead of relying on her sight, she relied only on her inner self. It was then that she would start to use the rotation, but she wouldn't stop at its normal dome size. No, the rotation would begin to expand and expand and expand as she powered it with the overdrive level 2. The dome itself starting to become entranced in lightning style chakra. A lightning style rotation. The dome grew bigger and bigger until it eventually reached the edge of the walls themselves. As it did so, the dome colliding with the edge of the arena walls. The markers would all be destroyed by her rotation. The dark clouds beginning to dissipate as the barrier had been destroyed. As Hanabi stopped spinning, she was able to see that on her body, she had been hit in some areas. Somehow, a few of those flames were real and she had been struck by a couple of shuriken and kunais. But for the most part, she was still standing. Sakura was slowly getting to her feet, only to feel the power of Hanabi. As Hanabi blitzed her quickly, getting in front of her before she could do anything, Hanabi would strike Sakura down with a gentle fist, 96 palms. In 96 quick strikes in succession, Sakura would fall to the ground defeated and Hanabi would be declared the winner. Even still, Hanabi had to admit that that was actually one of the more harder times that Sakura had ever pushed her. And that even if Sakura wouldn't accept it, Hanabi had to recognize that she had serious skill if she could pull something like that off. Sakura would be carted to the infirmary. As Hanabi made it back to the stands with Sasuke, the both of them recovering and looking worse for wear as they sat beside one another. The two of them knowing that they'd have to go at it in the next round. Naruto looked back at the both of them and simply smiled. Man, you two look like you've gone through hell. The two of them would simply look at Naruto and tell him to shut up and that he needed to get ready for his match. That's when Naruto remembered that now it was finally his turn to show what he could do. As Kakashi watched on in the stands, 
He was proud to see that his students had advanced so far. And now it was time to see what his third one was made of. As Naruto jumped out and stood before everyone. He had already put on a decent match against Tamari. And now his next opponent was Shikamaru Nara. Naruto had known enough about Shikamaru to see how his shadow possession worked. And he knew that that was something that he would need to avoid at all times. Shikamaru would lazily make his way out to the arena floor. He wasn't really all that excited about this. Of course, he had respect for Naruto, and it wasn't like he didn't want to try at all. But at the same time, from what he had seen against Naruto, he wasn't as much of an idiot as one might think. Meaning that if he were going to try to win, then he'd have to put in some effort. Uh, Naruto, I'm going to be entirely honest with you. I don't really want to fight you. What? Shikamaru, you can't be getting lazy now. This is the finals of the tuning exams. Come on. This is a chance for us to let me finish. But I respect you. So I'm going to give it my all. But I'm going to make it very clear, this fight isn't going to last very long, you understand? Naruto shook his head and agreed. As Gimma called for the match to begin, Shikamaru would quickly go through a set of hand signs. As he used, Earth Style Mud Wall. A simple mud wall? Naruto wondered what he was doing with a mud wall. However, he didn't really think about it for too much longer as Naruto instantly used a wind style air bullet jutsu to blow away the mud wall and destroy it completely. But when he did, Shikamaru was gone. Where did he go? Naruto wondered. Shikamaru was hiding and observing. You see, Shikamaru had earth release. Of course, his chakra reserves weren't all that great, so he couldn't spam any powerful earth techniques, but he decided to pick up some basic ones, the mud wall jutsu, and now he was using earth style hiding camouflage, which basically allowed someone to blend in with the earth around him. Shikamaru was basically standing next to the arena wall, completely invisible to Naruto. As he gauged his options, there were two holes in the ground, both of them connected from what Naruto had made in his fight against Tamari. There were a couple of downed craters here and there. He had the ability to make the mud wall technique, although it was a simple enough low ranking earth jutsu, so he could use that to his heart's content. He couldn't use this camouflage technique for too long though since it steadily drained his chakra the longer he used it. He knew that at Naruto's best, he could make up to 50 clones. If Naruto tried to go all out doing that, Shikamaru would have to make sure that he caught all 50. Now knowing what he needed to do, Shikamaru now had his game plan. Shikamaru would create a few mud walls here and there, at random spots all throughout the arena. Naruto had no idea what was happening, but it looked like there were a maze made out of mud walls. Shikamaru waited, as Naruto would make all of his shadow clones. He told them to fan out and to search the area for Shikamaru. He figured with the arena being as big as it was, he couldn't possibly use his shadows to catch all of them. But that was just what Shikamaru was waiting for. He waited in anticipation as the Naruto spread out, all of them trying to find where Shikamaru was. In order for this to work, they had to be spread out evenly. There couldn't be one clone, one Naruto to be left amiss. First, there was the original Naruto. Shikamaru walks amongst the other Naruto's as they ran and searched for him. 
staying close to the earth walls and staying camouflaged so as not to be seen. The crowd were wondering what were going on. Has Shikamaru left the arena? Where did he go? Sasuke and Hanabi both briefly used their Byakugan and Sharingan and they could see as clear as day what was happening. Shikamaru was camouflaged and Naruto couldn't tell. Of course, they could have yelled to Naruto what was happening, but they chose not to. That wouldn't be fair to Shikamaru, and if Naruto wasn't smart enough to figure it out on his own, then he deserved to lose. The real Naruto stayed to the back, allowing his clones to search, but he was still close enough to all of them to hear any audible response. This allowed Shikamaru to get pretty close. He used the transformation jutsu next, turning himself into Naruto before undoing the camouflage technique. As he looked towards him, he would whisper, Hey boss, I think we found where he's hiding. What, really? Where? The Naruto would point to a particular corner of the arena. Naruto would dispel all of his clones, except for the one that knew where to go as he led him down the way. Naruto would quickly run through following behind his clone as they eventually arrived over to a corner of the arena. All of the walls would be dispersed as Shikamaru was squatting down trying to hide. He raised his hands as he looked towards the two of them. And it seems like you caught me. You know Shikamaru that was kind of anticlimactic don't you think? Uh, maybe, but in the end, it seems as though you caught me now. I don't really have an attack that could really stop you here. You're not even going to try to use your shadow possession? Hmm? What do you mean? I already did. But Naruto looked down. There was nothing touching his shadow and Shikamaru was standing right in front of him. But then suddenly he felt as though he couldn't move, as the Shikamaru squatting in front of him grinned before disappearing like a mirage. Hey, what's going on? He would hear his voice behind him slowly change. Well, that was easy enough as the Shikamaru would appear behind him. Naruto would be turned by Shikamaru to see who he was talking to. You... Yeah, it was a bit more complicated than I would have thought, but in the end, it seemed to pay off dividend well enough. But how did you... Oh, I used their mud walls to try to confuse you and your clones. Then after that, I used the camouflage technique to sneak over to where you were, before using the transformation technique and turning into you, tricking you into thinking that I had been captured. Once I knew that you had let your guard down, it was easy enough for me to capture you here and now. <laughs> Naruto couldn't believe it. He had been caught so easily. Was this really how he was going to lose because he had let his guard down but then Naruto would smirk what's so funny <laughs> well Shikamaru a ninja must see through deception don't you think and what do you mean by that simple Right now, I've already won. What do you mean by that, Naruto? I know you haven't. You don't have any clones. You dispersed all of them except for me, the one extra you weren't prepared for. <laughs> you think my limit's only 50 clones? I know it is. Wait, is it not? Let me let you in on a little secret, Shikamaru. 
Right now, underneath us, there are 50 Naruto clones. What? Yep, there are 50 Naruto clones under us right now. They're using the Headhunter Jutsu, and they're explosive clones. You see, I had let 50 of my regular clones go out to search for you, but I hid some more underground, just in case I needed a trump card. No way. I didn't even see you do it. Oh, if you don't believe me, I can always show you. After all, you saw what happened to Tamari, and I don't think your defense is any better than hers. All I have to do is yell release, and they'll blow this whole arena sky high. Shikamaru was now caught in a deadly situation. If what Naruto said was true, then right now he was standing on a landmine that Naruto could let out with a simple release. But what if he wasn't? Was he really sure that Naruto could only make 50 clones? What if he could or what if he couldn't? Was he really ready to take that kind of risk? And even so, did Shikamaru have anything that could counter it? No, he didn't. He didn't have a Byakugan or a Sharingan. He had no way of knowing if there was anything underneath him or not. It was like a gun under the table, so to speak. He had no way of knowing whether or not something was going to go off. And honestly, even if he could come up with a plan, he really didn't feel like trying to. Shikamaru, he dispelled the shadow possession jutsu. He raised his hands in the air and he told the proctor that he gave up. Gemma though was pretty cautious about stepping over. So he asked from a distance is he sure that he's giving up? And Shikamaru announced he was giving up and that Naruto wins. Genma took this as a sign of defeat and he would declare Naruto the victor. However, Naruto would simply smile as he went running around cheering. Genma though would tell Naruto to disperse the clones before they intentionally caused more harm to the arena. And that was when Naruto would look back towards the proctor as he smiled. Oh, there were no clones. What? Both Hanabi and Sasuke would look back at one another as they couldn't help but laugh. They had known the truth along with a few others, but those were only people who had a dojutsu or were paying close enough attention. You see, Naruto had just lied. Even Shikamaru was surprised by this. He knew it was a possibility, but he thought Naruto was too dumb to lie. Even he was shocked. He actually got tricked? Naruto really lied? <laughs> I'm sorry Shikamaru, really. But you kind of had me in a pinch and I wasn't sure what to do there. Wait, you really lied? Yeah, I mean I had to do what it takes to win now, didn't I? But, well, I'll be honest Shikamaru. I know how smart you are. Your shadow possession jutsu was something that I really didn't know how I was going to counter. I was hoping that I could capture you quickly, but it seems you caught me in a trap. I had to think fast of something. I mean, maybe you were going to give up and let me win, or maybe you were actually going to make me forfeit. I wasn't sure of what to do in that last moment. So I came up with a lie. I figured there was no way you'd really know whether or not I could make 50 clones, and besides, you had seen my fight with Tamari, and you knew what my clones were capable of. I basically played a game of chicken with you, and I got you the duck. I'm sorry about the deceit, though. For Shikamaru, there was a strange sense of catharticism with it all. On one hand, 
Naruto had actually managed to pull a fast one on him. But in the end, that was the mark of a shinobi. If this had been a mission, and Naruto had needed to get away from a situation, Naruto would have done it successfully. Kakashi, however, wasn't too surprised. After all, Naruto was a prankster at heart, and in the end, Naruto knew how others perceived him. You see, the only reason why Naruto could pull something like this off was because of two reasons. One, because Shikamaru had no way of knowing whether or not Naruto was lying. But the second reason is that Naruto had the perception of being an idiot. People thought that Naruto was too stupid to think of something so clever on the fly. In the end, Naruto played it off as if he were being more courteous to Shikamaru. If Naruto really did have 50 clones hiding under their very feet, and he just allowed all of them to blow up, in the end, Naruto knew he could probably tank that attack. But Shikamaru, he knew he could not. He called a bluff, and Naruto won. It was a gamble, but it paid in his favor. Even the third Hokage was impressed at what he had seen. Sometimes, the mark of a shinobi, it wasn't just about the jutsu you could use, but it was how well you could deceive your opponent. The simple fact of the matter was that in both cases, of Naruto's fights, he had managed to deceive the enemy, whether it would be for his own counterattack or to allow his enemy to drop his guard. And because of that, Naruto had gotten a victory in both occasions. Naruto would win and he would move back up to the stands as he sat with both Hanabi and Sasuke. All three of them proud of the fact that they had made it to the semis. But now, it was for the final match of the first round. Rock Lee looked back to the trio, and he congratulated them on getting as far as they did. They all gave him a thumbs up and told him to do his best, to represent Konoha and make it to the semis, and all four of them would fight it out to the finish. Lee would nod as he jumped down from the crowd, Guy bursting out with joy and anticipation, as now it was Lee's turn to show what he could do. As Gara would appear before him, there was an ominous silence that fell before the arena. Now, for some of you at home, you know of the fight between Rock Lee and Gara. But I can assure you of one thing, whatever you think you know, you're about to be shown that you haven't seen nothing yet, because this Lee has learned a lot more than you can imagine. And this fight is one that's going to rock the house. This concludes Naruto Polaris, What If Hanabi Hyuga Was Born First, Part 5. As always, if you enjoyed today's video and everything else that we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcastings that has to come out now and in the future. Stay tuned next Monday as we continue Naruto Polaris with part 6 of What If Hanabi Hyuga Was Born First. But anyway, that's going to do it for the end of today's video. I'm Javon Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcastings. Signing off, and I'll see you next time.